Good afternoon, or it helps if I actually take that down, doesn't it? Good afternoon, everybody, and a very warm welcome to QuickBooks Labs. QuickBooks Labs has evolved, as we said last time, so now we're going to be taking back that feedback, looking into how to improve it, and hopefully you'll find that the new format has everything you've wanted. It's designed to be the place to learn all about the world of QuickBooks and other accounting software, and we've gathered the best experts in the field to give you that chance to be able to listen to what their views are going to be. Uh, we also have the opportunity now as well to take some questions as well. So if you are live, make sure you drop those questions during the show. Um, and we still aim to be the first Wednesday of each month, at which point we hang around these microphones to talk about the latest news, tips and tricks for QuickBooks and the world of accountancy. And we have quite a bit to talk about today. I'm one of your hosts, I'm Patrick, a chartered accountant, owner of a accounting firm called Boffix, a QuickBooks certified UK trainer, with fancy new logo, and that QuickBooks chap on YouTube. And join me is a panel of experts, and I'm going to let them introduce one by one. Johan, you want to go first? Yeah, afternoon, everyone. My name's Johan. I'm the Group Managing Director of the OnPoint Accounting Group and the QuickBooks Strategic Partner. Fantastic and great to have you with us. Charlie, do you want to go now? Yeah, hi, I'm Charlie Khan. Um, I have a small practice in West London uh, and um, also a group on Facebook for QuickBooks Pro Advisors. Awesome, awesome. Looking forward to listening to what you guys have to bring to the conversation. So first of all, let's go through the boring stuff. So make sure we all know what's going on here. So first of all, we are live to the world at our regular time of 4.30 UK, which I believe is still 10.30 US time, but don't quote me on that one. So if you listen to it back at a later time, why not think about joining us live? That way you get to be involved with the show and ask us anything using the chat box. And that gives us a chance to ask those questions as you need them. Um, furthermore, we are now live on the podcasting services around the globe, so feel free to subscribe on the podcasting service of your choice. We've got a quick uh, run through of the agenda to go through, so a bit of an update on how recertification went, now that's all finished. Um, there's a few, two quick little updates to QuickBooks themselves, which I'm going to show on screen for us all. Um, we've got an update on emails and how that's going in the world of QuickBooks, um, exception reports and a VAT issue, QuickBooks dashboard, rehash of the business network, and Q it's there. And then finally at the end, we're going to have a new segment of the show, the roundtable discussion, where we've got a topic that we're going to bring and discuss accordingly. So let's jump straight into it then, recertification. As you may or may not be aware, recertification closed on the 31st of July for anyone who was looking to become pro advisor or at least recertify as a pro advisor. I'm going to go around the table first and have a chat with everyone. So how did you find the recertification for 2021? Charlie, you want to go first? Uh, well, I, I was um, I, I was very, very slow this year. Uh, I'm normally not too bad, well, I say normally. It was, last year was the first time to recertify, wasn't it? But um, I was relatively early last time, not only enough to get any nice little prizes, uh, but within a couple of days. Uh, this time I left it, in, I think, about two days before the deadline, which is very, very bad of me. Um, uh, greatly helped by your fantastic video, Erin, that uh, explained how uh, all the well explained all the new features. Um, uh, glad glad one of us watched it then. <laughs> no, no, that was brilliant. I was really good because it highlights a lot of features. There are things that I don't tend to use. So, for example, I pretty much never use the app on the mobile phone. So the questions relating to that, I mean, I, I, I'd have probably worked some most of them out, but it was useful to see that. Um, and there were one or two other things I can't remember what CIS may have come into it. I can't remember, um, and I never, I don't have any clients with CIS. So there are a few things that I don't use that that your videos were helpful with. But um, yeah, but so I got there eventually. It wasn't too difficult. But um, yeah, I'll definitely won't leave it that late next time. 
Brilliant. Overall, a positive experience. And yeah, yeah. And I can see just in the back there, I can see you're one of the uh, one of the lucky <laughs> few. So how was it for your end? It must have been, uh, must have been great. Uh, yeah, I uh, I did mine on the bus. <laughs> well, I think it went live around half 10, 11 o'clock. I was done by <laughs> on the bus, <laughs> taking it nice and casual. The uh, handouts, though, the PDFs for the open textbook side of things, they were really well done. Yeah, um, yeah. They made life really easy and really simple. You couldn't really not get 100%, he says, <laughs> um, about <laughs> testing the whole audience. With those handouts, you would struggle to not pass the tests. Huh. Good, good. And I'll uh, pass that feedback on as well to uh, Katie and the team, because I know they spend a lot of time putting those handouts together. Um, just a bit of word of warning, though, just to give you people in the background, and maybe it won't be the same last year, but it definitely was the case this year. If you fail to recertify by that 31st of July 2022 deadline, then Especially you would have had, you would have been barred actually and found it really difficult to get yourself certified or at least become, you know, go back and do another certification, so core or advanced, uh, because you're actually barred from doing it at that point in time. So it really does make sense then next time around just to make sure you don't miss that research certification window as your hands edging do it on the bus if you need to um or as charlie did just leave it to the very last second but either way no no not a good <laughs> idea uh, i would just point out you just you just you just slight uh, uh um, audio typo you said 31st july i think you meant 30th of june was oh of course yeah yeah 30th yeah. of june wasn't it yeah yeah good point there um yeah. so yeah do do make sure you do that because i know we've had a few kind of issues with our internal staff where they've not been able to get themselves sorted in time and now they're kind of in limbo so yeah do make sure you get those recertification done um and then you get to keep your accreditation as needed um next one then is just a really two really small updates that have happened in quickbooks online it has been quite a quiet time um so we aren't expecting to see lots and lots of stuff we were talking off camera about how we do think that there's going to be some announcements sooner hopefully um and we think that's going to be the reason why it's a little bit quieter now uh, but nonetheless let's just quickly just share a screen um and what i want to show you is a really really small update what kind of helped me with this one is this is one of the updates that we brought into the recertification and i did the video of and i you know did the webinars well and everything else and then just as they closed the um, recertification and thankfully before recertification came in they then changed it so um during recertification we were showing you how that if you go in and edit your management reports then you did have the un the option under advance to then change down here how you were actually be able to um, show what those management reports and make sure that they were all in the right order. Because if you had lots and lots and lots of pages, what you didn't want to have to do is delete them and try and put them in everything else. Now, they've moved the place, so it's not now in advance. It's now under the report section itself and gives you the chance to move them around here, which is probably a better place to put them in, honesty. I think it does make a lot of sense that they're there. But just be aware that if you are looking to move your reports around and get them in the order that you want them, you now can only do them from the reports page. It technically means your primary pages and your end notes and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you can't move as you've done before. Anyone actually use the, uh, to find that useful when that, that was introduced? Anyone kind of got any comments on if it's better or worse in this, this format? I, I think it's more user friendly. I think it's more of a natural wizardy flow that you'd come to expect from any of these step by step processes. It makes more sense that it's where where the reports are. Right, let's reorder the reports. I'd argue you preliminary and then no pages should always be at the start and finish anyway. So, <clears throat> yeah, it makes sense to me. Yeah, no, I'd agree. It's more it's more intuitive, which is always important. Yeah, it's going to be easier for people to find, isn't it, ultimately? Um, yeah. I must admit the amount of times that people were kind of shocked to find that under the advanced button there was a an option there to reorder your pages was uh, quite significant. So, yeah, it's good to see that there's uh, updated and thankfully not um, not before the end of the recertification. Otherwise, uh, those videos would have looked rather um well out of date already um the next one is a really small update again but it is interesting to see what's going to happen going forward so i'm on a trial balance like here i jump into an account uh, as i would normally do to start drilling down into it <clears throat> and suddenly we've got a new little button at the top here which at the moment doesn't do anything but as we can imagine is going to give us the option later down the line to be able to move between different um different accounts what do people think about that? I, I 
can't imagine wow. anyone's going to be negative about it. That looks fantastic. If, if that's allowed, I mean, the, the issue I have at the moment is I'll, I'll run, I'll, I'll let's say I'll go into a PL account, drill down on a particular nominal code, but then I'll take out a bunch of columns, change a bunch of columns, change some formatting so that negative numbers are red and brackets, which is my preferred formatting, for example. Yeah. And then I think, oh, let me go and look at another account. And yes, you can go in and change the customization, do it there, but if that does keeps everything the same other than the nominal account it's on, I think that'd be very, very nice indeed. Like that. Yeah. I can imagine that's the reason for it. I can't yeah. when I was kind of seeing that, I couldn't really think of a, a proper use case for, for a proper use case other than keeping customization options. So yeah, hopefully fingers crossed. What do you think, Jan? It's got to be a more efficient way to do it, hasn't it? Because what we've got to do at the moment, press back to report summary, scroll yeah. down, find the line we want, and then click. Whereas now I just go up there, drop down box, select the one I want and go to it. Yeah. It's it's micro gains, it's micro efficiencies, but all the sportsmen yeah. in the world are looking for micro gains. The reason cyclists shave their legs is it saves them a second on a 24 mile lap or something. Like, <laughs> we're all looking for these little <laughs> mini seconds to be added up. So everything helps. Do, I don't it. think any of the three, but we don't, the three of us don't even shave our faces, that's, uh, <laughs> let alone our legs. Is that, I'm, I'm guessing that's why Ash isn't here today, because he shaves his face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, speaking of Ash, though, I'm really I'm looking forward to next time he's here, though, because I want to want to find out exactly what happened over in America. So for yeah. that didn't know, he was uh, the reason he came with us last time uh, was he was in America uh, pushing his um, net tracker. So, yeah, fingers crossed on that one. Wonderful. All right. So those two quick updates, nothing major, is it? But I think, you know, definitely uh, opportunities to see what's going on going forward. A uh, bit of a PSA announcement of the next one. It's just that we are having increasing amount of, especially for us and our clients, of clients having problems with being able to send invoices to uh, particular email accounts. So what's happening is clients are creating their invoice, they're sending those invoices off, and then they're actually getting, or it's appearing that they're getting a bounce back for these emails. What appears to be from our testing, and we don't know if this is true, and when we spoke to the QuickBooks, they couldn't give us a definitive answer either, but it appears to be anything where there isn't a kind of um, more, what's that phrase for it, more, uh, you know, standardized domain. So if it was a uh, sent into an account like Gmail, for example, or Hotmail or AOL.com, if they were that, you know, uh, them sort of email accounts, it seems to be working absolutely fine. But if you were trying to go to John Smith at bobslade.com, then that suddenly was seemed to be the issues for certain clients. Um, it's definitely something that um, that's causing issues for, for, for particular clients because it seems to be that if they have one or two of the issues it's starting to become more and more prevalent for them um, and I think it's very you know embarrassing sometimes for clients to then have to go and ask for a different email address to be able to get around the problem um, but if you guys have you kind of come across any issues or problems yourself if you, is, it, is it widespread have you seen this problem Johan you want to go first yeah I've got one client who's a butcher who's been in touch recently saying he's got this problem so through your testing, because we've not had time to really test it, we've just flagged it with QuickBooks. Through your testing, are those are the receivers getting the email, or is it actually genuine? Is the notification true that it is not sending? So from our testing, they're not getting an email whatsoever, um, and they're not getting the reminders either, which makes sense if they can't get the original yeah. one. So yeah, it's a case that they are completely in the dark that there's even an invoice due at that point. Cool. Okay. Not ideal. No. And QuickBooks's official way of sorting this is you download the document and you send it to them elsewhere. I was just um, going to say, let me guess, download and forward. <laughs> yeah. Which they didn't even say to download or share the link, which I would have thought would be a, at mm. least a little bit better because at least you've got that that bit of control, haven't you? Maybe having to update the invoice or whatever you need to do. So, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely an odd one. Uh, Charlie, do you want to go next? And then we'll go to the we'll uh, questions and points and the thing. It's it's not been a particular issue. I mean, on occasion, I've had um, customers of clients say they haven't received invoices. I suspect it's just ended up in their spam filter and they haven't noticed and didn't bother looking properly. Um, I mean, in terms of the if if it, if it is a serious problem for anybody and it, it occurs regularly, then I suppose it, not if you've got too many customers, but if you've got a, a, a short uh, number of fixed customers you invoice regularly, I suppose you could set up 
rules in Outlook so that every time you send the invoice from QuickBooks, it, 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 you have to make sure you get copied. And when it comes in, you set a rule that says if from QuickBooks, I can't remember what the address is that they use, comes in. And if the other addressee is, you know, fredadabc.com, forward it to fredadabc.com. And if it's you know, bob at xyz.com, forward it to bob. I mean, that'd be a rather torturous process, but that would be a, a way to automate it if it went on for too long. QuickBooks ringing up to say, yeah, uh, oi. <laughs> yeah, no, I was trying to stop that ringing. So, yeah, let me get rid of that phone. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, and I, it's one of those, isn't it, where it's, uh, it, it seems like, how has it suddenly happened? I think that's one of the things that, that's the question that my clients keep coming back with is why, you know, how has this suddenly been a, a problem to, 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 to come along? What would be interesting to work out is those, the email addresses that have got custom domains, so like onpointaccounting.co.uk, yeah. are, is it Google related accounts that are bouncing or is it Microsoft accounts that are by bouncing? Yeah. Who is the provider of these accounts that are provided? That must, or is it a general bl blanket of everyone? Because if it's just yeah. one, we can narrow down the problem and try and work it out. Um, but yeah, my only thought is it's been reported to a email server provider as junk email too many times, and now it's blocking them generically. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, yeah. Which if, if that's the case, that's going to be a much, uh, probably a longer problem to solve, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, John, quite... said, do you want to yeah, carry no, on with your point? Well, I was just going to say, I mean, as you, you know, just saying, I mean, if, I think it's a very good point. Uh, so the invoice, the, the invoice are being emailed out from QuickBooks at notification.intuit.com. And it's possible that Microsoft 365 or, or G Suite, Google, um, or one of the others are highlighting that domain as problematic and, and are blocking all emails sent from that address is quite possible. Um, yeah. That's yeah. So to update from our side as well, from our practice, we have one client out of all of them where, for whatever reason, the email won't go to. Now, this was before I was I was aware of it being such a pre pre prevalent issue, but I was under the impression at that point though, that that was the client pro like issue. There was a problem with the client email address, um, but it sounds like it's not. And yeah, it's going to be something we're going to have to just keep an eye on. I think going forward and find a solution for. Um, but then I know other clients where they, you know, their their clients are clients of really big organisations, like for example, BT.com. For example, it's those BT.com ones that are problematic. So, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a tricky one to for them to find. But yeah, I think all we can do on this one is maybe put maybe make sure we put a lot of feedback in, because last time we checked, QuickBooks weren't really aware of the problem or didn't really see it as a problem. So I think the more feedback and the more opportunities we give to care, uh, care, they're going to be able to put that up. I've had a few comments coming through. So Paul's here. Hi, Paul. How's it going? Um, Rachel's in the house as well. And also congratulations, Rachel, for getting married over the last couple of days. Uh, looks like an absolutely amazing uh, time. Um, Paul asking if we shave our legs on a separate note there. Um, and then also um, about the whitelisting and we don't get the opportunity in quick one. We don't do, we don't have any options. So it's, it's not our, it's nothing we've done wrong. It's not when our clients done wrong. It definitely <laughs> is. Um, there, there might be a feature that can be built by QuickBooks. So if this is going to start becoming a problem as more and more advanced filters have been put on. So with our AML software, we can link it into our Microsoft account yes. so that the emails are being sent through our Microsoft account. So there's none of this QuickBooks invoicing. The invoice can come from accounts at onpointaccounting.co.uk. Yeah. Yeah. Now that would potentially, if the issue has been with the, the QuickBooks address has been flagged as spammy, that could resolve this problem. Yeah, definitely. And I don't know if you've ever, you know, back in the day, forgot to put on a, a client's email or something and, and actually been the one receiving those emails come back and now to solve that issue. So we've had it before where, you know, clients, clients email to say X, Y, Z is not working or whatever. Um, and then it's come straight to us as opposed to the client. So that would solve that issue as well. And then Paul's agreeing with you there, Charlie, about um, the forwarding option and bringing the forwarding in. So, yeah, I think that could be a solution all around that could help. But, yeah, one to keep an eye on. And, again, please, if, if, what I would say to people, if they are experiencing the same problem, please just let Case know, um, the help team know, and then at least then we can start escalating the problem and get it up there. 
Speaking of problems, great segue into the next uh, section on the next part we're going to be talking about. So some of us got emails this month uh, about a problem with the VAT, um, VAT reporting <coughs> last month. So what was happening was in certain situations, it seems to be cash accounting clients only, but, you know, do check to make sure. Um, but it seems that cash accounting clients were, for whatever reason, not reporting correctly any exceptions in that particular period and the exceptions weren't appearing at all therefore not being included on the return it's quite a serious one here um two things kind of come to mind for me first of all um really impressed that the quickbooks were quick enough to get the information out there so we were getting emails pretty much inst instantly which is good to see it's not nice it happened in the first place but at least those emails were out there to give us an opportunity we're not 100% sure that yet if those ex exceptions are going to roll over to next period, but we'll know by next month because we've got a monthly client that's been affected. So we'll be able to feedback on that one. Um, and hopefully, fingers crossed, that's all we'll need to do is we just uh, forward a moment to the next one. Um, but it does kind of bring back something that we stopped doing, which was reconciling that, that account. We, we did it historically for... For, for the last probably three years or so prior to the last couple of years um, because back in the day in Sage Line 50 you had no choice you had to keep reconciling your account otherwise you'd be in trouble but maybe we've got to start going back to reconciling back return uh, back accounts maybe um, but yeah what's what's everyone thought Jan you want to go first I uh, yeah we've I think we've had three clients flagged on it um, but as you say not only have they just have they flagged that there's an issue They've emailed us and flagged it really quickly. They've given us a really not good email, which explains the problem, explains the solution so we can action it and deal with it. We're not sat there like you get told, oh, there's been a problem with this. And then you, everyone sat there trying to work out, right, how do I fix this? Yeah. The, the solution was there. And because we got such a good email from them, we just, auto, we just forwarded it to the client saying, look, We've been made aware of this. These are the actions we're taking in line with the email below from QuickBooks. And it all looks very official and it takes any concept of blame from us away. QuickBooks have taken it on their shoulders and dealt with it. And they've given us the material. That means we can go to our clients and say, look, there's been a problem. It's been addressed. We're taking the actions required and QuickBooks have accepted responsibility. So it doesn't tarnish our relationship with the client. It just shows us as proactive and fixing a problem. Yeah, agreed, definitely. Uh, Charlie, what's your views? Uh, well, that sounds very good. I, mean, I don't. Um, I no longer have any cash basis fat clients. I moved the last ones over to accruals a couple of years ago. Um, I've never been a big fan of cash base unless unless you really really have a business with cash flow problems. Um, you mentioned about reconciling. The VAT returns though each quarter. When you when you say that, do you VAT just controls, mean, I mean, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so we we do that anyway. We definitely do that. So it's one of the reasons why I, I, I may have mentioned on these groups before, but um, why I get frustrated that QuickBooks posts the journal, the VAT journal between VAT control and VAT suspense on the date you happen to do the job yeah. rather than the quarter end, because if I, and I, and for that reason I, I I change the date of the journal each time I, I reset it to the quarter end. Because then you can see at that point that the VAT control account is zeroed out. Uh, and you can also see that at any future date, the um, if the uh, if the balance is, is previously as different to zero, that means you've added in some additional transactions prior to the last VAT quarter end. And hopefully that balance as at the previous quarter end will match what's in your current figure for exceptions for the next quarter. Uh, so you've always got a permanent ongoing way of very, very quickly assessing whether your whether your VAT return does reconcile just by looking at the figure on the for exceptions on the VAT uh, on the VAT return page compared to what the balance was in the previous quarter end. Yeah, so I mean we would always reconcile it for like a year end or set of accounts oh, yeah. or anything, but for quarterly, monthly ones, we just stopped doing them. It was just one of those where we, we were doing it every single time, never having a problem. So it was like, well, let's, you know, let's let's kill that control and just um, focus our, our attention on other, other bits. Um, so, yeah, but maybe I think it's a lesson to everyone, isn't it? You can't be complacent with these things. It's technology is technology. At the end of the day, there could be issues and problems, and that's why we do the, the control. So, yeah, I think we'll just start reconciling again just to um just to get them done and now that we've got those fancy new reports uh cash cash accounting uh, reconciliation can never be 
easier thanks to uh, one, one of the best updates we've had in a very long time, which was the uh, uh, cash on the um, debtors and creditors, which is a year old now, which is scary to scary to think. Um, brilliant. Um, the next topic we got, I think this was you, wasn't it? Johan, who brought this one to the table. QBO's got a new payroll dashboard. Do you want to talk about that one? Uh, it is on its way. Yeah, we all got the email that came out literally about an hour and a half ago. Um, the I don't know if anyone remembers a couple of months ago, QuickBooks put out feedback on their Facebook group and on email saying, what would the accountant's interest be in a payroll dashboard? Is it something of interest? And it would show all your clients, when it, the payrolls were last run, whether it, those went well to HMRC, pension providers, journals, um, and it's mainly powered by QuickBooks pay, uh, Advanced Payroll, um, where we've got all this insight. Um, but the beta sign up went live this afternoon. So that is ready for people to go. Um, so yeah, definitely one we'll be looking at just from a leadership point of view. My leadership team will be reviewing that uh, to make sure we're keeping on top of things at a glance. Is that that's just for uh, advanced payroll, not for standard payroll? Is it? I don't know. I need to check. I think the plan was to be able to bring in both. Okay. Um, I see it all from there. Maybe, maybe it's changed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. They've moved pretty quickly on this because I they were having meetings while I was at head office for QuickBooks last uh, back in June. Um, so I think in the space of three months, they've gone from testing the audience's reaction to the idea to plugging it in and building it and beta testing it so yeah hopefully by the time we have next have a session we'll be able to do a live demo of it excellent i know um well i can imagine with anything to do with payroll it's still going to be very much in that annual cycle isn't it where realistically they want to be making sure it's ready for the next april don't they because that's technically when most people will be moving over um, so I can imagine that that's going to be part and parcel of why they're going so quick to get something up and running. And yeah, I, I think it's definitely needed, isn't it, to be competitive? It's I love the payroll solutions, both both the you know the uh, basic and advanced, um, and I do use them uh, a for our practice to run payrolls because I think it's probably the best one in terms of that sort of scenario. Um, and we got a couple of clients in as well, but we just find it difficult. To run it as a bureau because it, it wasn't ever built like that but i think now we're getting the tools to do it maybe that's a a time to kind of um kind of reconsider it and bring it over because it'll make life so much easier wouldn't it if they are just all running all on the same software yeah definitely and it, my my hope is this is this this is a step in the direction of a payroll bureau um from quickbooks whether it is or not a very different matter but that would be the ideal solution towards this all-in-one concept that we all like the idea of. Definitely. And if, if, if they also then allowed uh, you to give access to, if you're running a sort of payroll bureau thing, if you gave somebody access to just access to the, the payroll part of, of those clients that didn't necessarily have access to the rest of the bookkeeping, which, which they may not need to see, uh, that would also be an additional useful feature, I suppose. You can do that on QuickBooks Advanced. I suppose, yes, you'd create a special user, wouldn't you, and just give them, but then they'd log into uh, it. Any, any staff member that you add to QuickBooks pay, Advanced Payroll can be classed as a manager, which would give them access to uh, the ability to add and remove staff, uh, timesheets, and whatever else you turn on in there. Right, but, they'd, but they still have access to the whole of QuickBooks. That's no. really, they're still, oh, they're not? No. So they'd, they'd log into a different URL? Yep. Yep, OK. Yeah, through the my work. Yes. Yes. URL. So yes, you can do that. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. And I, because I'm, I'm, I think my favorite part about um, core or the, the basic version of the payroll is it's my go-to if a client ever wants to do their own because it's by far the simplest one out there to use in terms of just yep. put some numbers in that they're they they're, they're relatively happy with it and I think. I've seen very few mistakes that clients have been able to make with it. So that's always a always a plus for me. So if we can get them, you know, at least be able to support them by seeing that bureau kind of look to it as well, I think that could be quite a powerful um, element for us. Um, and yeah, couldn't agree more, Paul, that the um, QuickBooks needs to do some serious work on journals with VAT payroll and CIS. 
don't particularly how they don't post the name of the journal. And you know, my personal pet peeve as well is find a way to get some uh, some reports on there as well would be useful automatically. Um, any more we want to talk about? Hey, well, I think that's that's enough until we can see it properly, isn't it? I yeah. think that's a little teaser going forward. I uh, Charlie... have a bit of an info screen or a demo for you, but that link that I've been sent um, is going to. Uh, sorry, we're not we're not working. Link. <laughs> Too many people are excited about it. Click that link. That's what it was. <laughs> Beat us to it. Um, Charlie, you wanted to talk about um, or go back over a previous topic, but the business network. I think we've got a bit more detail about it, haven't we? And it kind of looks like. Um, probably more than we thought originally. Do you want to have a bit of a, a chat about that one? Yeah, something they, QuickBooks launched in the US and I think Canada as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the idea is that I think initially only QuickBooks users, I mean, I think it becomes ubiquitous for any software, Zero and all the rest of it as well would be lovely in the future. But basically the idea is within the software, you would tell QuickBooks you were happy to join their, their network and then any of your suppliers or customers that were doing business with you, when, when they add you as a, so let's let's say my business, I, I've added myself as happy to join the network. Um, if I then, if you're then uh, my supplier or customer and you add me in your QuickBooks, when you start, at the moment you start typing in a new name, uh, if it's not already in your database, already within your QuickBooks file, it invites you to, to create a new name. But what this now does is it looks further, not only at your own database with the file, but, but is that company in the overall network? And if it is, you can you can pick that. And what that means is that first of all, it will fill in the address and contact details, telephone number, email address, and so on. But it's a live connection as well. So if, for example, your business changes address, then anyone who is your customer or supplier, um, when they look at your the, the record for your company within their own QuickBooks file, they'll see your new address, your new email address, your new telephone, whatever it is, um, which is very useful. But then it goes further that if I send a sales invoice to somebody else who is within the QuickBooks network, that instead of them just receiving a PDF invoice, uh, they will get an electronic notification within their QuickBooks file saying, Charlie Khan has sent you an invoice. They can review it on the screen and then choose to add it directly. Uh, so it won't add it directly. They still have the ability to, to view it first and check they're happy to add it. Um, but it, it then gets added automatically. They don't need to manually type all that data in, which is which is rather good. Um, I think I'm just looking at their, their, their page on it. Well, look, I can't remember. I think there's a few other bits that may come into it. I can't remember. Um, what, what would be lovely, I suspect, would be for the future is is if, uh, and I don't know if this would ever happen, but if the big software companies got together and were happy to share, um, uh, the competition rules may, may, may not like including this, but uh, to share this data, because then it becomes very useful. The ability to send an invoice to somebody, no matter whether it's in QuickBooks or Xero or Free Agent or whatever it is they use it, um, and, uh, and the stuff goes straight in. And even further, I su suspect in the future, if they did that, you could also give it a generic code, maybe an IXBRL tagging code or something like that. So if I'm sending you stationary, if I'm sending you professional services or whatever it is, uh, you can then within your own software say whenever an invoice comes in that's tagged with this particular type of code, this is the nominal account I want it to go to. When it comes in with that code, I want it to go to you know, that nominal account um, because that then starts to create this maybe it does bookkeepers out of a lot of work, um, but it creates the future where so much of the stuff becomes automated. Yeah, it's that blockchain idea, isn't it? Which yeah, uh, yeah. The utopia that we're, we're kind of all hope one day will kind of come to fruition in some way or another. I know Xero's kind of got a similar sort of aspect to this, haven't they? You send an invoice from Zero to another Zero, and it kind of interacts and they kind of have the opportunity to come in. So it definitely is something that... Um, I think it's uh, is is going to be a benefit to everyone. I just I I'm really excited for this to be something that just comes just so we can have a little play around and, and see how how much people get get to grips with it and kind of bring it on because the concept of it is a really clever concept, isn't it? The fact they're calling it a business network and they're bringing that in and trying to show it as more than a more than just um, just a bookkeeping solution. And when you think about it from like the fact they've now got MailChimp and they've got kind of that sort of, they're starting to build that nice little ecosystem, aren't they, of uh, kind of an essential tool more more than anything else for, for, for small businesses. What do you think, Jan? Yeah, I mean, I'd point out 
I don't enter invoices by typing them in anymore. I use text, but um, <laughs> minor detail. I think it is the next. It's that next evolution from text, isn't it? That that it all goes into into one uh, central location, and someone updates an address, and that makes that updates everywhere. You know, that true one true source of information that'd be fantastic. Um, I don't skeptic in me tells me it's never going to happen as nicely as we want it to um purely because we're all on different softwares um you know there's zero there's quick books we all know none of these guys talk nicely to each other um are they and then we've got to consider gdpr rules etc um so it might be that they, we can use the business network for limited companies sharing details with each other because that's publicly available information. But as a sole trader, does it breach GDPR? That no, because they're choosing. The they're choosing. To, it's everywhere. They're choosing to add their name to the network. So it's it's not Intuit isn't just automatically putting you into it. You as a sole trader could choose whether or not to have your details and which parts. Of your at which details. point, your auto, as soon as one person opts out you've got a miss missing link in the chain so it it becomes it's not bulletproof like mm -hmm. you've got a leak in your system so at that point right just because joe blogs didn't want to have his information in this business network i still got to use dext for when his invoices come in um so yeah whilst there's human choice in, involved and people's lack of trust in databases and softwares i think we're it's a nice solution to have for those that use it but it's not going to be the only solution we're going to have to still rely on the decks auto entries hub docs and whoever else other providers are available on the market <laughs> yeah i suspect that particularly once mtd uh for income tax is ubiquitous and it's going to impact everybody turning over 10 10,000 pounds a year or more um, I suspect that further down the line, HMRC may even impose uh, requirements, for example, for every invoice that's sent out to have a unique ID. So given that the software is all connected to the MTD network anyway, you could imagine them forcing Intuit and Zero and all the rest of them. But when you generate an invoice, it pulls a unique ID down from HMRC or from some GovUK database that's completely unique uh, in the country. Um, and then when I send you my invoice, uh, first of all, it's got a unique ID, which will be tracked then by your software, which means that HMRC could then match up the unique ID from the purchase invoice in your system to the sales invoice in my system, make sure that you're claiming what I've declared as income and your input VAT is the same as my output VAT and algorithms can do all of that on the fly. Um, but you could then also have potentially have a facility where Again, it's back to IXBR, IXBRL codes or similar, where again, each invoice is tagged with something. And it's up to a business then as, as to what nominal code they, they want to map each tag to. So they can they still have full control of their own charts of accounts. Um, but you could start, you could, I mean, this will be some years away, I imagine sort of, you know, five, 10 years away at least. Um, but I could imagine that coming down the tracks. So whether it's just, I mean, I think if Zero and QuickBooks, you know, are starting this process, it's, um, it's just a, a, I think, a few steps along along a route to to complete automation. Yeah. So effectively, we'll have HMRC as the blockchain, which couldn't be any scarier, could it? When you think about it, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if there's that anyone was worse out there. Behind barcodes, wasn't it? Every item in the available in the supermarket was going to have its own individual barcode. I can attest to you now, based on my experience in retail, that never happened. And that's been meant, it's meant to be in place for the last 40 years. Everyone's going to have every item gets its own unique barcode. When you're using smaller suppliers, there's duplicate barcodes out there. The amount of times I used to scan a teddy bear for five pounds in a gift shop and it came up as a sticker rock for 50p. <laughs> Two different suppliers used the same barcode, coincidentally. But, but I suspect that the difference is that that, that, that that in that situation, retailers it's up to a retailer to decide their own barcode system and they, they can create it and they buy them from somewhere. Yeah. If MTD is going to force all the software to be online anyway, so if yeah. the software therefore has to go to HMRC or somewhere, some online uh, repository, uh, 
to pluck a, a, a and that is the same one then then it will be unique because they, they have to go to a single what QuickBooks likes to call the single source of truth uh, there'll be a single place where they go to get the, the unique number so but that's a good point there yeah it'll be interesting times and yeah maybe that is what the end goal for MTD was all about we knew it was like it's softly softly at the beginning wasn't it it yeah. was very much oh, yeah. a case of like invoice formatting like how many times have we spoken as an industry as the government spoken about standardizing our invoice format the layout the detail the data on there and it's never happened there's not enough people going in one direction with it I've never um, come across that. Is that is that a is that necessary to standardise formatting? Uh, it was discussed a while ago to simplify as part of MTD, oh. the VAT and stuff was a standardisation of the layout of because how many times do you look at a receipt and go right? Is that giving me gross or net? Is it you know what which numbers yeah. which etc. What details missing? Um, well, as I say, I, I suspect this would all go to. And MTD will, will accelerate this, I suspect. Will all go to to computer readable data. So how it appears to the human eye on a PDF or on the screen, because it won't really matter in the end. It'll yeah. all be computer readable data, and then each field will have it. Well, this is this is net. This is bad. This is gross. This is the date, and so on. Um, I suspect it's where it will go. And as Paul's just said in the comments, that's all well and good coming up with these concepts for the UK. But as soon as you bring in international sales, it sinks the yeah. boat. Absolutely, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Interesting times ahead, but you know, let's hope they bring the the network out so we can at least have play around with it and see if uh, see what they say. We used to have a, a similar sort of kind of concept in QuickBooks, didn't we, where it was connected to the company's house at the beginning, and it kind of gave us that opportunity to bring data in. So, yeah, hopefully it will make that a bit easier. Um, your hand back to you. We've got. Um, Apparently, there's a bit of a celebration to happen, isn't there? Was there something to do with it, sir, and something to happen? I might have a button to press as well when you Good when you news. Say it. So, last week, HMRC certified and confirmed the first ever fully submitted successful MTD ITSA filing. Uh, and one sec, one sec. <laughs> Carry on. So that's good news. That like the beta is working. There's more people going on it. But what's even more exciting for the QuickBooks users out there is the first successful filing was made by QuickBooks and a QuickBooks firm. It wasn't me. It was uh, Broadbent's accounting solutions. Um, they were on the beta and they have filed the first successful MTD. It's a uh, return to HMRC, um, which is great. So concept the concept that QuickBooks have built out is proven it works and now it's just a case of putting the volume through and testing the HMRC side of things from a volume point of view um but yeah Iris Iris were bragging for years that MTD VAT they were first to be ready for it and first to be certified by HMRC so QuickBooks gets the MTD it's uh, bragging rights and ironically for Iris, they only so far what four returns in the <laughs> in cash flow, whatever it was at the time. So yeah, yeah, it was really great bragging rights. No, it's it's good news, isn't it? And the, the thing is, well, we didn't get any feedback of how like what the what it looked like or anything like that. Yeah, I was, it's all on the NDA and everything else, which is a shame. But yeah. as soon as we can get that information, though, I'm really interested to kind of go through and be able to share that. I think I think people just want to see what it looks like don't they from the software side of things and i think that will yeah. as soon as they've seen how simple and how easy it is to do i think that will that will definitely make people a lot more confident with it going forward yeah i think take the approach that has been taken to vat submission where it states this is your quarter this is the amount of income this is the amount of expenses this is your profit error check and vial i think if you take the vat format you will not be far wrong um, but yeah, and, and that's also, been made simpler for the smaller company, smaller businesses, because HMRC announced a couple of weeks ago, I think, that they were continuing continuing the three line accounts process for businesses turning over under eighty five thousand. Uh, so for, you know, for any people who don't know, so on on an income tax return, there's nothing to do with companies, uh, but for a sole trader on an income tax return, if your turnover is less than eighty five thousand, you don't need to break out your costs by category. You can just show your total income, your total costs. And then at profit, and they announced in the last couple of weeks, I think, 
that the same will apply for your MTD quarterly filing and your end of period statement, where it's called the EOPS, which yeah. is the, the, the new equivalent of the, of the, of the tax return. Yeah. My understanding is that has come out of the blue and so none of the software companies have built anything for that yet. And they're considering whether they will or not, um, because ultimately, if you use QuickBooks already, you're already categorizing things. Yeah. It doesn't really need just three lines. You might, you've got the information there. You may as well submit it. Because if HMRC, if you flag a HMRC system for a check, the first thing they would look at, oh, you've only sent us three lines right now. Give us the breakdown. They'll expect you to have it, whether you've got it or not. So you may as well just send it and save one less potential. Well, if, if, for if you're in QuickBooks and things, yes. I suspect, though, that will all be most useful for people who are using the various other solutions that are either starting to come out now or will be coming out. Yeah. Uh, the ones where, for example, they just connect to your bank and just allow you to quickly say, this is personal, this is business. And instead of then allocating that business category, you're just going, you just use it like a, like a Tinder process. You go, you know, swipe left, personal, ignore it, swipe right. No, you wouldn't know, none of it, yeah. Uh, swipe right for, uh, you about, uh... swipe, <laughs> swipe right for business. And then you won't need to go any further and, 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 and categorize it at all. So I suspect it'd be very, very useful for those yeah, very small sense. businesses that don't need something as complex as QuickBooks. Normally think... you refer to things as gamifying them, but I think. <laughs> well, you can see where my head's at, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I did use that joke of Tinder it uh, when we were to, when we were sharing it uh, when we used to go around and actually uh, uh, show the mileage app. But yeah, so I think it is a thing. Well, I hope it's a thing anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Charlie's made it official, so I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but the um, well, I I, I I tend to agree with there, Charlie, because I think where I see this being um, an, an opportunity is the banks and you know how they're gonna obviously going to bring out some MTD software, you know, your Starlin and your Revolutes and whatnot. I think they're the sort of people who, which would absolutely love the idea of just being able to do free line accounts, send them in, job done, and yeah, and it just keeps those smaller people, uh, smaller uh, uh, compliant, doesn't it? And your rental properties and people like that, I think, uh, yeah, coconuts of the world and well, hammocks okay. of the world, they're going to, yeah, they're going to jump at this sort of chance, aren't they? But yeah, again, they, I think Jan's also right in the fact that QuickBook Zero or those ones that we're used to. Yeah. Let's just set, let's just sell the whole, whole one, and let's hope this is an opportunity to keep QuickBook self-employed around. So, just uh, just point it out there, QuickBook. This is your chance to get rid of them, uh, rid of that uh, software solution. So, yeah, let's not let's hope that the uh, idea of having just free lines doesn't keep QuickBook self-employed around for longer than it needs to be. Yeah. Anything else on it, sir? Everybody, we're all good on that. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So 10 minutes left for the round table discussion. So this is a new, relatively new section that we brought to the, uh, to the, to the course here, uh, to the um, podcast. And the idea here is to give us an opportunity just to talk about something that might be a little bit more topical or just something that we just want to talk, talk about and get opinions of the experts in the room. So I posed this question to the uh, to the guys and I said to them, um, what features would you like to see next if you had one feature that was allowed? And let's let's try and think outside the box. Let's hopefully think of something that's not been announced and something that you've uh, not really um, seen coming forward. But I'm going to start with you. Charlie, what was your one feature that you think um, should be uh, introduced next into QuickBooks Online. Oh, I'm going to think about this. Um, <laughs> okay, let's yeah, go come back to me. I'll have to think. <laughs> I'll come back to me. I'll have to think about that. Sorry about that. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> so, you got one feature. One. <laughs> I've, one. I've mentioned one of mine already, so that's fine. That's the payroll bureau. That would be amazing. Um, we kind of know what's coming for tax, for MTD and stuff like that, and books to tax and stuff like that's been spoken about at Accountex. So that was really good. What I'd love to see, I don't know if anyone else has seen the product yet, is Intuit our beta testing product called uh, Accelerate in the US and Canada. And it is a virtual accounting office for all intents and purposes. Your clients can go to a landing page they can see your diary and book a meeting like you can with Calendly and other such softwares. They can book and pay for consultations. They and they can do Zoom meetings. Uh, not a Zoom meet, it's not Zoom, but it is a video meeting on this platform. Um, and 
in that technology, they have built in automatic note-taking uh, note software. So there's an AI in there that's making all the notes. And I think that's a fantastic virtual presence for us to have. Um, and I would love for that to be built and baked straight into QuickBooks online accountant software for us so that we have our client dashboard, we've got Accelerate, we've, it builds it all in and it kind of goes to that uh, concept video we saw in 2018 at QuickBooks uh, Connect <laughs> with the yoga instructor whose landlord tries to turf her out. So the account, she jumps on a video call within the app on QuickBooks. The accountant looks at it all, comes back to her and says, look, you can try and rent some of these places that look like they've been vetted in from Zoopla or Rightmove. Or you could go and buy these places and your cash flow will be this much better off and here's the model cash flow. And that's all been done in like an hour or something. So I think that tool baked into QuickBooks could be really powerful. So I'd love to see that. Yeah, great idea there and, and a good good one to bring on. Um, I think the only the only one I, I was kind of skeptical of it when they first kind of brought that in was, are people going to be wanting to kind of, I suppose they wouldn't need to. I was thinking about, do they need to install other software? So is it going to be another, because I don't know what, what it's like for you, but you, you try and take someone out of Zoom or Teams or whatever you're used in, it's kind of a, a bit of a, a nightmare for them, isn't it? But I suppose if they've already got QuickBooks kind of installed, that's the, the end goal, isn't it? It just goes through QuickBooks. Anyway, How many so. people now do their FaceTime through WhatsApp? Yeah. yeah because yeah, yeah. it's a feature in WhatsApp. It's baked into WhatsApp. Um, you know, I think if there's a baked in video call option and instant messaging option in QuickBooks app and dashboard on the website, then it'll be used. Um, so yeah, no, I think it's a really good opportunity to enhance our service offering. Um, but you're right, yeah, they'll need to prove their validity of security and stuff like that, because obviously yeah. very sensitive topics are being discussed. Um, and if I could add just one feature to that as well, I don't know if you remember back in the day, but we used to have the option to be able to share a screen with clients. You know how you put the code yeah. in and bring it in. Yeah. If they could bake that into that as well, yeah. Yeah. there's your, you know, your your what you call it, your PNT calls, your, your new yeah. your new client calls. Absolutely brilliant at that point, isn't it? You know, yeah. just share screens and let's see how many transactions you really do have, and <laughs> instead of exactly. you know, telling us it's uh, five when it's two hundred and fifty. So yeah, yeah. Like if you but go also, if you... for advisor listing on yeah. someone's looking for an accountant, they go to the pro advisor listings and someone can book a, di a, meet, a discovery meeting in your diary from that. How yeah. cool is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, and also, for example, if you're, if you're doing the month end, um, the month end review process and in there you've got the ability to, to send questions to clients, uh, again, if you've got the ability that the client can then click on and, and, and arrange a, a, a call with you directly in product where you can both look at the same transactions together and say well what's what's this one for what's that one for and you're both looking at them so yeah i think i think that'd be fantastic the cool. ask the client feature that's already in bookkeeping review i think yeah. we all discussed yeah. a few months ago and we were saying how cool that would be if that becomes into the app and my understanding is that is the long-term vision is that you'll get a notification in your quickbooks app that your accountants asked you a question on a transaction you'll be able to see it and respond to it in the QuickBooks app on your phone. Love it. Right. That is where the, that's the roadmap for that. Awesome, great feature there, Johan. So Charlie, have you had time to think of yours? Yeah, nothing quite so as exciting as that, not quite so much uh, <laughs> so, so forward thinking, but something I've wanted for a long time, it, it, it's quite dull the thing, but on VAT, um, is I, it, I, I don't often, I mean, Zero is a good product, but I don't often praise it in comparison to QuickBooks. I think QuickBooks is better than Zero in most cases. But the one thing I really, really have liked for a long, long time in Zero is the way they do their VAT report. Mm -hmm. um, and I really, really dislike the way the QuickBooks does its VAT report. It is absolutely horrible. Um, and so I wish somebody at Intuit would, would look at the Zero report and go, well, we could spend about an hour programming that um, and churn it out, because I cannot believe it would take very long to program it. I mean. You know, so to have, I mean, for example, what I would like to see in the back report would be all of the income listed together with a column that adds up the net sales and a column that adds up the output VAT. Uh, you need to look at that, those same report twice as you do at the moment. 
um, and then breaks it down as, as zero does very nicely. Look, here's the zero percent, here's the five percent, here's the twenty percent, here's the no vats, here's the exempts, etc. Um, and also, and this is unforgivable in QuickBooks as VAT reports, includes the exception items as well in the VAT report and includes that in the, the, the sort of summary, that 100 total thing. Um, but, you know, dear Mr. Intuit, please look at the zero VAT report and, and bring it in. That would be wow. my uh, simple, I, 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 I think it's about an hour or two's programming by somebody in California, I suspect. Well, well actually, um, I think you should watch this space because okay. this should be should be oh. something that's been announced um relatively soon so you should be able to get very good on that one very um good. and yeah uh, it's exciting so yeah let's um let, let's put a pin in that one before i get myself in trouble but <laughs> i do think you're right though i think the ability to um you know uh, bring in some more kind of comparable reporting just to give confidence isn't it that what you press submit is right and i think some of the goodness from the battery checker should be in there as well i don't know why we can't kind of capture that somehow to say look this is this is what we've checked this is what it's okay at and um go from there because i love the battery check it's one of the best things it still needs work there's still need extra bits that i think it can do to to really shine but i think as a concept of just checking that data before it goes is an absolute dream so if we could kind of capture that and have that in the report as well be beautiful to do as well i, I would just well, if you if i've got two seconds on the vat error checker something i would like to see would be the ability that if there's a certain type of transaction that that, that always gets coded a particular way bank charges without yeah. something like that the ability to say to the software these will always be coded this way and you don't need to highlight them for me every quarter that would be a nice way to reduce the number of potential errors each time that come up but you don't need to waste time looking at things if you look at every quarter and you know they're correct Okay, what are you saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You're right. Wonderful. Oh, I think those two are great little uh, features that I think will uh, will bring it. You got anything to say on that one, Johan? Before we move on to to my feature on the VAT report? No, no. I think they're all good ideas. Um, I mean, I don't. Not being an accountant background and being more of a business owner background, I don't get overly hung up on reports and VAT reports and what is and isn't included. I just think, what's the box? In, what's the number in box five? That's really what really matters to the clients. That's what they really care about. Not giving, they don't care whether the report gives us confidence in its data quality, etc. And for us to understand, they just want to know what box five is and why is it so bloody high. <laughs> yeah, exactly right yeah because you're doing well is my answer <laughs> yeah. Yeah. sometimes sometimes because yeah, i do well yeah. um mine though i was going to be really controversial and say wouldn't it be wonderful if we could have a nice little bank that all connected beautifully and attached <laughs> to quick books and everything else but i thought probably not go down that route so uh, i'm probably going to steal what ash would have brought up to be honest because i know it's a pet peeve of his um and it's not so much a new feature but it's an enhancement to a feature that's already there because we did have a long period of having great innovation in the product and the product was changing rapidly at all time. Every time you log in, there was something new, it seemed. And we're going for a really good state of the product really, really enhancing. Um, and this was um, probably down to MTD that has kind of slowed down now. There's a lot of resources kind of gone into making sure that works. And we kind of seem to be less enhance or less new products and more refined of, of the product itself as it or less new features and refinement of the features that are already there um and i know a lot of it is down to the fact that quickbooks do like to have the kind of idea of just doing a uh, let's get something out there see if people use it if they don't use it then we we don't you know there's no point but more development time into it and i get that concept but for me i'd love to see the cash flow forecast just fleshed out and properly utilized to what it needs to be like let's have the option to bring in those VAT numbers in there so we can see the VAT numbers as they come in so when they're due and how much that's going to affect the cash flow let's give us an opportunity to put in other tax implications that are going to be in there as well and give us a chance to bring that in and let's just really flesh it out for scenarios and, and everything else i know we can push it to a third party app and you know there's some great apps out there that i i do really like but there's something about just being in a client's meeting and jumping into that cash flow area and just talking about numbers there and then and what you know how that's going to affect and what's the, what's going to happen. Um, I really do kind of like that, and I know that 
with the banking side of things, that's what was going to happen. There was going to be a big enhancement to the cash flow and it was all going to flow <laughs> through with the ability to kind of look and see and, and have opportunities to move maybe when you're going to make a payment to something so that it can actually work and all that sort of stuff. And I just want that utopia and that idea to still come to fruition because I, I, yeah, it's one of the best parts about being an accountant, isn't it? You know, we get to advise, we get to talk and we get to plan you know the opportunity for clients to maybe take on a new project or improve here or improve there and cash flow is always so important to those conversations so giving us those tools to really go in there and um and improve on that i think it's is, is really important and i think that cash flow uh, you know it was a great starting point but it's had no proper you know enhancement to it for a while so yeah i'd love that to kind of be fleshed out to a, a fully viable product not just a um <laughs> a almost viable product so yeah um any comments or points you want to make on that one guys i would have i mean that's that's a really really good idea and i completely agree with that which triggered a thought in my head that would be nice <clears throat> if they added in a basic credit control uh tracking system okay so all yeah. they would need to do because I mean, there, there, again there are third party tools that do this stuff extremely well and if you're chasing hundreds or thousands of invoices then then you're going to need a third party tool quickbooks is never going to be powerful enough to, to do with that kind of stuff but you've got the ability at the moment the only thing you can really do is to automate reminders so you can send out reminders before the due date or after due date you can send up out, out, up to three of them um but if for example you could have the ability to track whether it's against a specific sales invoice or against that customer, phone Bob on the 5th of January, he said the checks in the post um, or whatever it is. And then you, when you run a, 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 a there'll be a, as well as the standard debtors report, uh, you can run a different type of debtors report, a sort of debtors credit control report that have these extra fields within them that you could see what was chased, when it was chased and things like that. Um, whether reminders have gone out, who you spoke to, all that kind of thing um at both the overall client level or customer level and at uh individual invoice level um i think that would be very very useful and enable particularly you know also for those accountants who are working with clients maybe it's, you know, the yeah. accountants have been asked to do credit control instead of spending what can be a lot of money using a third party tool and you know that's great when you've got a client that, that wants you to spend hours and hours a month chasing 100 or 200 customers but when they only issue 10 or 20 invoices a month 18 of which are paid on time and there's only two to chase, you're not going to pay for third party tools. So to have the ability built into QuickBooks at a very basic level, I think would be very, very useful, very powerful. Yeah. And that's what we wanted the banks to be, didn't we? To give us yeah. that option, give us that new revenue stream, give us that chance to help clients. It was, yeah, it was all too good to be true. Johan, any final points on that one? No, I really like that idea for having notes on the credit control side of things and like, you know, even when I send out uh, credit control balances to my team members for them to tackle with their clients, as each client manager looks after their own credit control, they I send them a, an Excel sheet from QuickBooks, and then they send me an Excel sheet back with their notes attached. Well, actually, if that was just all built in in the system, um, yeah, that'd be much easier. Yeah, you're right. I suppose. And you can't. I was going to say you could use work papers to try and replicate it, but it doesn't quite work, does it? So yeah, it's not going to be a clean solution. So yeah, yeah, having something like that, I think that's a great, a great idea. Uh, Paul came up with a, a feature. I think we've all been chatting for a while. Uh, CIS payslips actually work and actually uh, do what they're supposed to do. Um, even now, it's always kind of that awkward moment when you talk to clients about using CIS on QuickBooks. You're like. You might have to take a step back though if you're thinking about having the payslips working, but that's a rant for another day. Thank you, Paul. And if anyone space. else, what's that? Sorry, watch that space. Watch that space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We pay um, just launched CIS with payslips and annual reports and stuff all built in. Once it's in key pay, if they can convince the team at QuickBooks of the validity of it, they just turn it on for them. So it could be there in QuickBooks advanced payroll as a new place for CIS in the future, in theory, based on yeah, what we've seen. Because the, the connection's already there, isn't it? It's already bringing the data in, so just in turn it on. theory. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, there. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, and that's uh, and, and just with Paul saying that, though, if you guys out there have <clears> any um, 
uh, features that you would like to. It'd be a nice one to kind of let us know. We are going to be setting up some sort of Google form so you can start putting questions in, but also we'll put some uh, response in as well, and we can uh, have uh, elements like that and have you guys have more interactive on the show. Speaking of which, I think that's the end of today's show. So thank you very much for my uh, uh, team to be with me today, and it's been great to hear your thoughts and everything that's going on. Uh, thank you for questions and, and comments that have come through from live chat. Remember, if you are looking to come come and have an opportunity with us, then 4.30 on the first of a Wednesday is going to be when uh, you come through. And we've already decided when the next one, haven't, haven't we? Um, I may have already forgotten what that date was. 3rd of August? 3rd of, 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 of August. There we are. 10th of August. Yeah. Uh, slightly later time. Then we're going to trial a different time of 5 o'clock to see how that goes forward so yeah five o'clock on the 10th of august so hopefully you can join us there uh before we leave though um just a quick opportunity for the team to go around and explain where they can what they've got coming up and where they can find you so charlie do you want to go first of uh, what's coming up and and where people can find you uh yeah so um i've got a um, a group on uh facebook um if you uh, want if you're not a member already it's for quickbooks pro advisors I'm uh, just trying to find the address. Uh, where is it? So you basically just look for QBOA user group uh, within Facebook. Um, and then uh, when you apply to join, do make sure you answer the, I think this just asks two or three questions just to say that, that you're a QuickBooks Pro advisor or not, whether you're accountant in practice or not. Um, and it's a very useful forum for um, pro advisors to discuss issues related to QuickBooks and similar topics. Uh, so please do join us. Definitely highly recommended. Uh, Johan, what have you got coming up and where can people find you? Um, so, I know before you do, though, I must say your videos are starting to come even better than before. And uh, my little mini game I like to play is where's the Cresco um, uh, Caterpillar going to be? Uh, Caterpillar, a cactus going to be in this video. So I like playing that game. <laughs> <laughs> right, where it is. right, I'm going to make a game out of that then. <laughs> Go for it, Jan. Um, so. I am on YouTube and LinkedIn. Just search Johan Gori and it comes up everywhere. Like Google Johan Gori. First five pages are just me. <laughs> I've been <laughs> far too much content for you. Um, but I'm also talking on a webinar for Reza Hudder on the 26th of July. We're talking about offshoring accounting services. Um, so that's due to be a panel discussion. So that should be really interesting for any accountants that are considering outsourcing and offshoring um but yeah linkedin or youtube nice one definitely be interested in that one um yeah that'll be a, a, a definitely interesting topic to cover uh speaking of webinars actually you've reminded me i'm on the accounting web webinar on two weeks from today something like that but if you look at the accounting web and account Counting web, so I've got the completely wrong accountancy manager webinar series. Um, their summer series, um, <laughs> definitely not on the accounting web. Well, I have been on the web, but not, not coming forward. Um, but yeah, on their um, accounting manager webinar series, I'll be doing a bit on about digitalization um, and everything else. And they, they launched their first one today, and I wasn't able to catch it live, but I was able to kind of see some of the kind of bits. And it was a really good webinar series, so highly recommend getting yourself involved in that one even if you're not an accounting manager uh user it is still a really good one to get involved with and that is it for today so thank you again uh guys for coming along for this one we'll um uh we'll make sure that uh, we are around for next month um and keep your eyes to the peel uh, keep your eyes peeled to our relevant channels because there is some news that may or may not be appearing in the next two distant future so we if that does happen Maybe we'll do a nice little uh, pre uh, impromptu QuickBooks Labs to talk about it and keep your eyes on that one. Between now and then, though, do keep an eye out as well for the opportunity to put us questions and tell us anything that you want to talk about. Um, and then we will look forward to seeing you in a month's time. So a goodbye for me, and I'm sure a goodbye from everyone else. Goodbye. Bye. Cheers, all. See you soon. <laughs>